Matt and I are working outside today trying to get some things done. We've already mowed and weed eated. That's always the worst chore that we dislike the most. Now we can work on the garden. It's still way too early in Southern Appalachia to be planting tomatoes and, and greens, uh, green beans and squash and cucumbers and those kind of things, peppers. But we, there's some other stuff that we can be doing to prepare for that time. Last year we used some grow bags for the first time and we were really pleased with them. Now I know a lot of people, uh, Pastor Lon and Robbie Lynn, they did not care for the ones that they use. And I think maybe it's the difference in the climate uh, where they're further south than we are. They had a problem with the bags really drying out way too fast. We, we didn't have that problem. Uh, we get probably more rain than they do and then we have cooler temperatures. So we really liked them. And then for um, Christmas, it, I got some, again, I don't remember which girl I was trying to think, was it Katie or was it Corey? It may have been Katie. Got me some for Christmas, and then also for my birthday last August, they got me some. So I got some more of the really big ones. I think they're like 30 gallon. Uh, and Matt, I don't know if you can see him back there, but he's back there beginning to work on filling them up. And then the little ones, I've not decided yet what I'll do with those. They're really little, so I know they will dry out faster than those big ones. But I, I'm not sure if I'm going to put flowers in those or if I'm going to put maybe some kind of herb, have them close to the house, kind of right out the kitchen door. Anyway, but that's what we're working on today. So how we fill up the grow bags is first we have, since we have chickens, we have a lot of, you know, chicken compost. So we put some chicken compost in the bottom of all of them. Then we love to use uh, mushroom compost. So we put some of that in. Then we usually top it off with just some garden soil, you know, some that we bought in a bag or, you know, if we're really industrious, we might get some out of the woods, but most of the time it's just some that we've bought. That's kind of our method for making any kind of new bed, but we did our bags like that last year and they worked really well. So that's what we're, we're doing again this year. On to the next chore. Our local 4-H club was selling some plants and we got some from them and they were selling some blackberries. You can see this one's already blooming. So we've got to get these in the ground. This is the Navajo variety. We have uh, up here in this bed that you can see back there, that's full of blackberries. We actually just planted them last year though. And of course they were small over the year and over uh, into the fall, they've grown really big. So our plan is to put a cattle panel up there so that we can kind of weave them through and they'll have something to support them. But we haven't got that part done yet, but we are gonna get, try to get the rest of the ones that we ordered this year planted. Before we can actually plant them though, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have to weed it. The weeds have overtaken the whole bed. So we, uh, back earlier this spring, uh, really late winter, we went around and put a layer of compost on all the beds. So we put compost on that bed already, but in between then and now, of course, the weeds have took over. Pulling weeds means that our chickens will get to have a feast. So they're, they're excited. Anytime we're pulling weeds, I just save them all and then I throw them in there and let the chickens go through them.
Now that we've got them planted, I'm going to run get some mulch and some water. Matt's feeding all those weeds to the chickens. The most interesting thing we found in the bed was a volunteer cabbage. I have never had cabbage volunteer, but there is a cabbage growing there. I don't know if it's where I threw out some uh, compost or if maybe a seed that I was um, maybe in some dirt, like where if my seeds don't germinate in the dirt that I in the potting soil a lot of times I'll just throw that out like if they don't germinate so maybe that's where it come from but really interesting to have a volunteer cabbage So Matt and I went in and had some dinner. We were really tired from working this morning. So most of our chores are done, except I'm gonna plant a few things. I would normally do it in the greenhouse, but it is so hot in there. You can probably hear the fan running, but even though that fan, fan pretty much runs continuously when it's hot, sucks cooler air in, it's too hot for me in there. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is while I was in there this morning watering the tomatoes, I really hadn't paid attention to the names that I'd wrote on the cups, but I started noticing. Uh, first, I noticed one or two, or noticed more than that. Sometimes seeds don't germinate, so I was looking at the ones that hadn't germinated. And then I noticed that some of the ones, several of the ones I was looking at, were my favorite little Tommy Toe from Carolyn and David Anderson, my friends, that hadn't germinated. So then I thought, wonder if any of them did. So I went through all the tomatoes, not one of those germinated. So I'm I was really upset about that, really disappointed. So now I'm gonna plant some more in the hopes that they will germinate. So that's one main thing I'm gonna be uh, planting. And I normally don't start in the greenhouse like squash and melons and things like that. Every year I, I can't resist though. It's, it, I do, I don't start many, but I start one or two thinking I'll get a little bit of extra early squash or the melon will really get an extra head start and have longer of a season to produce, you know, uh, if you're kind of taking away that time that it takes when you plant it direct sow, how long it takes for it to germinate and grow and come out, emerge from the ground, you know. But I don't do that on large scale. And typically what happens is the one or two that I do, then the others that I direct sow do just as good. Uh, so I really don't know why I do that, why I start those kind of things in there, but sometimes I do, so I might do that. And then I've got these smaller uh, grow bags that we filled up this morning. I've got to figure out what to put in them. Um, so I might, I think I've got some herbs in some of my seeds here, so I'm going to be looking at those and figuring out which ones I want to plant in those, if any. I'm also tempted just to put flowers in all of them, uh, but I, I, I know I probably should put something that we can eat. If this was ever a year that you needed to worry about your your stuff in your garden doing well, I think this is one of those years. But there are some edible flowers, nasturtiums. I seen a nasturtium coming up that I'd planted a few weeks ago. I just thought, well, I'm going to stick some seeds out and just see if, if nature takes its course, um, kind of like the volunteers do. And I see one of them are up over there. So I might do nasturtiums. I could do calendula. Those are great for a lot of different um, usage. So I'm not sure exactly what I will put in them just yet. So I just brought all my the cups out of the greenhouse with me, the ones that didn't germinate. You can see I've wrote David and Carolyn. And I think I'm just gonna, I don't know if I need to add any more soil or just kind of turn that over a little bit where it has been kind of sitting there waiting for something to, to actually germinate. I think I'm just going to do that. If any of them, I brought some extra soil with me. If any of them need some, I will top them off. But I think just kind of tilling up the soil with my fingers a little bit will work. All right, well, I'll try to holler at you guys later. I love y'all. Love you. Bye. Bye. That was Corey. So now to get back to what we were doing. Here's my seeds from David and Carolyn. I still can't get over that not one of them come up. I don't know why I'm praying that these do, or I may be calling them, begging them for some more seeds. Some people, I use those the red Solo cups, and some people just put one seed in it. I usually put at least two, just in case one of them doesn't come up to give it a better chance. 
sometimes I even end up with three. You can pull, you know, you can discard one of the seed ones, maybe the one that doesn't look as good, or you can kind of tear them apart as you plant them. I've done that lots of times and just plant them, you know, if they both grow up pretty strong in the cup. Okay, I've got those planted. Now normally, like it, it's every year that we start tomatoes, it's typical for a few of them not to germinate and that's no big deal. I wouldn't, like if just two of the ones I planted of David and Carolyn's hadn't germinated, I wouldn't replant them, that would be plenty. I'm just concerned that none of them uh, germinated. But for the other ones, these were the only other tomatoes besides them that didn't, there was four cups and two of them were Mountain Princess one was the black Russian that a subscriber shared with me that I'm, I'm interested in trying, and the other was speckled Roman that I've never grown before. So I'm gonna, just because since I'm already had to drag all the tomato seeds back out to redo those, I'm gonna quickly uh, replant these. I'm really interested in the black Russian to see. Maybe I'm thinking, I don't know, if you've grown it before, you can tell me, but if it's similar to, uh, Cherokee purple, which we just love. We just so love those. But my other ones, the black Russians that I planted are growing. So just this one for some reason. And the other one was the speckled Roman, but I don't think I'm gonna plant another one of them. I have some in there that did germinate. So while I was going through those tomato seeds looking for the Carolines and Davids, I found these. Katie got me this for Christmas. Rosella purple. Never grew it. Don't even know what it is, but I'm going to plant one of those. But normally I'm done with tomato seedlings by now, but I was just so couldn't believe that not one of the ones of, from David and Carolyn uh, germinated. And that was just one of my, that's my all time favorite Tommy toe that I've ever had. And a lot of you ask um, what kind it was. And I asked Carolyn, it's just, it's just a little orange one. And she could not remember. She said they'd grown them for so many years. She'd long since forgot what the actual name was, but it's just one that they, they save the seeds and grow every year. So now that I've got those done, so one of the things that I'm going to plant in my, my little grow bags, kind of just so I can keep a really good eye on them, is my thinking on this. Another wonderful subscriber, Robert, he sent me some uh, flowers. So these are some Lenten roses that are a different color than the ones that I have. So he's, he mailed them in a, in a wet cloth here and it, they made it, looks like they made it really well. Look at them. They look great. They made it wonderful. And he lives on the other side of the country. So that was really great. So I'm going to put them in here just so I can kind of keep a track, keep track of them and make sure sometimes if I get new plants and I put them out in my flower beds or my garden areas, what I usually do, somehow something happens. It's like, I don't know if I forget about them or I don't know. I just can't keep track of them. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking about them and they're long gone. They're, they're dead. They're gone. Probably because I didn't keep, you know, I didn't water them or take good enough care of them. So I'm really excited about these. I love the uh, Lenten roses. They're so pretty and they do very well for me. So that's what I'm going to do with one of them. He also sent, let's see what else he sent. This is a, an iris, a really interesting iris. And let's see how it's doing in its little wet paper towel. So the interesting thing about it is the, um, the leaves or the fronds, they have little, a purple, purple cast to them. So I'm excited about growing this one. I have a purple purple iris that looked very similar to the picture he sent me, but my, my leaves don't have this kind of really unique purple, so I don't know. Now that I'm seeing this, it looks very familiar, but either way, I'm very excited to get it. And I'm going to put it in one of them, one of the grow bags.
And the other thing he sent me was a geranium because I mentioned in the video that I had geraniums. So this one is slightly different than the one I had, I believe. And there it is, a little geranium. It's so very tiny. I might actually, instead of putting it in a grow bag, I'm gonna lay it down right there. I may put it, I found some of these like deep, um, kind of cardboard, or what you call them. They'll decompose on their own little cup things. I normally don't buy them just because they're expensive, but these were on clearance. Well, what I did with my scissors. So I think I'm going to put, put a little geranium in here and then maybe I can just plant this entire thing in my bed when I see, make sure that it's going to do, do good for me here, a little one. I will reuse the bags that he sent them in, rinse them out and reuse those for other plants or for seeds uh, at the end of the season. I'm just gonna quickly go through my seeds. Here's some holy basil. I definitely want to grow that one. thinking about what I wanted to start. That would be definitely one. I can't hardly resist trying the melons, even though I know I could probably just do as good with them starting direct sowing them. Sugar baby, I might do that one. Chamomile, everyone says they just, it, it turns into almost a weed for them. And I, ha I just have bad luck. We barely grew, last year we grew more than ever, but it was still just barely like two plants from all that we planted. So I don't even know if I should try that again. I'm definitely gonna do calendula though. We love that. There's some yarrow, might try that one. Lemon balm, we have plenty of. There's a different basil. There's some oregano, which we have plenty of. Some dill, I might try to start some of that in the... And here's some nettles. A lot of people told me that since I was interested in eating hostas, I should try nettles. Um, and I've certainly been where there was nettles and they sting you when you're walking through them, but I have never had good luck at growing them. So I don't know, I need to find someone who already has the plant, I think. Cilantro, cilantro, I love it. I'm the only person in the family. I have some planted um, that actually overwintered, believe it or not, down in front of the house that I've been eating. And then the flowers, so many flowers. I wanna try the Black Eyed Susan vine. I used to grow that a long time ago, Cosmos. Nasturtiums, foxgloves, that was one I wanted to try. Again, I used to try to grow it and it just never did good for me. More flowers. See, I get so excited when I'm thinking about it that then I get, I have to watch myself because I know it's still too early to plant a lot of stuff. Even though today it feels like I could go swimming it's so warm, it's probably upper 70s, maybe even 80. I don't know how what the temperature is, but um, I know it's still not exzactly full-fledged full summer. And then, lovely lady sent me so many flowers that I want to try. And packaged them up so nicely for me, so I definitely want to try some of those. A lot of zinnias. I love zinnias. Zinnias is what we call them. I don't know. People say it different. So lots of those to worry about planting. 
So my hope will be for these little ones, since this is the end of April, um, hopefully by the time they need to be up potted, I can just put this in the ground, you know, without disturbing the plant. So that's my hopes. That's how I hope it works out. And I have some little, little plastic things that I will try to mark them with. And it never fails. They'll get mixed up probably, and I, I won't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try. I'm going to put sugar on that one. That's, I know that uh, Sugar Baby, it does very well for us because it's like a smaller watermelon, so you don't have to, I don't have enough sunshine to actually grow the big ones. Let's see. If I had a whole thing of plastic ones, now I've lost them. Maybe I'm sitting on them. Yep, I was sitting on them. There they are. But I also have some wooden ones I could use. So there will be two of the sugar babies. And there's one I've already opened, so I need to use it. If I had a favorite food, my favorite food is watermelon. I love it. I eat it every day, even... The ones that, like right now, I can get a watermelon that's not very good at the grocery store. Um, my produce stand just opened, so the ones there will be better. But even in the winter, I don't, I mean, it's like some people say, well, is that watermelon good? You know, I bet it wasn't really good and I just had to throw it out. I've never had to throw one out. I just eat it. I don't care if it, I mean, I've had really, really good ones, but like the one that I'm currently eating, or actually I finished it yesterday, it was really hard. It wasn't soft. I ate it anyway. Um, the only kind that I can't bear is when they're too ripe, like when they're just kind of just water. That's all they are. But I love watermelon. It's my favorite food. Favorite food. I guess if I had, what other favorite foods would I have? Um, I love blueberries, fruit. Blueberries and watermelon. <laughs> I think it's funny, but I love popcorn and I love cornbread. And those are kind of my favorite foods. Not a, not a very rich diet, I guess, but those are the things that I, I crave or that I like to eat a lot. So this is one I've not grown, Hell's Best Musk Melon. So it's like a cantaloupe. So I'm gonna do one of those at least. And I will plant more of these, direct sow them outside. I just can't resist trying to trying to get a jump and it usually never works but I just keep doing it I'll just do one of those and then the golden midget I didn't care as much for it but I thought I kept out a so I found the uh, Minnesota midget and I planted one of those just to get a, a little start. Now that was all, that's all the melons I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna think about the, the basil and the dill. I wanna do, I don't know. I think I'll save those for flowers. Maybe I'll just continue with these little things since I did end up buying them on clearance. going to do some dill. Dill is one of the, I use it in pickles and things like that, maybe in a salad, mostly for pickles, but it is the, it's like one of my favorite smells is dill. And what I need to do is, that's all I'm going to do, because I will make myself, what I need to do is do some succession planting, because it, once it goes to seed, it's not as good. One thing those about these using these little things is they dry out really quickly. So I check the greenhouse every day, sometimes twice a day, but I will really have to stay on top of those if our hot weather continues like this. So holy basil, I've never grown that before. So I'm excited to try this one. What kind of seeds? This has got little... Ooh. It's 
funny when you get older how your tastes change like me not liking I didn't used to like cilantro I worked with a, a great lady who made an awesome um, guacamole and she put cilantro in it and I learned to love it from her mm -hmm. but like basil I never was crazy about it and now in the summer when it's growing I just go by and eat it just raw I just love it so this is a um, basil lettuce leaf I've grown it before I'm gonna plant just a little bit of it and then I'm gonna move on to my flowers it's so exciting to plant I think part of it is somehow it takes me back to, well, of course it takes me back to um, Granny and Pap and helping them, although they didn't start seeds indoors like this. Oh, they might have, Granny might have started like a, some kind of flower or something, but um, they didn't, they didn't have a greenhouse and they didn't start their tomatoes. Pap would buy them, uh, those kind of things, but maybe it takes me back to that, but too, it, I think it, part of it is it takes me back to my days of making mud pies, just getting to play in the dirt. It's just something I really enjoy. And then I think I'll start. Eh, I don't know. I'm not going to do no cilantro. I think I will do... Maybe I'll try the Black Eyed Susan vine. I used to grow it and it was really pretty and I hadn't even thought about it in years until I just happened to see these seeds. on the Presley Girls channel put up a great uh, song by her and Sonny Rickard that, or it's an old song, it's not their song but Black Eyed Susie about Black Eyed Susie so that can be I guess in honor of them now in one of these grow bags I'm going to do I'm going to try I used to try to grow foxgloves so often and it just they just never worked and then when I've said that other people said oh you should try again it's really easy so I don't know I'm going to I'm reading on here so it, maybe I planted them too deep. I don't know. I'm gonna try, try it again here. A sixteenth of an inch of soil it says so I'm not even going to I'm just going to water them in and that's going to be maybe that was my problem before I should definitely put me a little thing though or I'll never remember what it was and for the next one I'm going to put some um, these are calendula pot marigold pacific beauty blend we grew those last year and they were really pretty and katie likes to make uh, they're edible calendulas are but katie likes to make calendula salve salve or uh, calendula oil mostly is what she makes and they really do it really is amazing how well it works if you get burned or cut or something you put a little bit of it on It really, really helps quickly heal. It's very healing. One more. And I never did do a squash. I think I'll do a, no, I'm not gonna do a squash in that. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna do, I guess I'll do some other calendula. And I've tore the name off of this one. Zeolites is it. That's my last one. I'll have to get me some water and water all these and put them back in the greenhouse. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as Matt and I worked outside. This is like my, my favorite. I, I love all the times of the year. I want to say my favorite time of the year, but then I love winter days when I'm sitting by the wood stove too and, and cooking up a good soup or 
um, reading a good book, all those things. So I, I just really enjoy life, but I do love being outdoors and, and love putting my hands in the dirt and growing things, mostly to feed my family, but also the beautiful flowers. Um, and so many subscribers have been so nice to send me seeds and share their plants with me. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Growing things is really part of the Appalachian culture. Uh, growing a garden, making a garden as we would say, Granny and Pap, uh, their parents before them, that's just really part of the culture is being there. And the, the women and men both, uh, but especially the women just really love their flowers and, and talk about them. And, um, I have an aunt who when she used to, I used to walk around her yard with her and she would tell me, look at him, look at her, talking about her flowers, you know, like they were real people because she just loved, loved flowers so much. She has a beautiful yard. She shared a lot with me. Uh, but it's really part of the part of the culture being outside and it's so good for you uh, and then you get the reward of the beautiful flowers or of the wonderful food to nourish your body so it's just wonderful so i hope that you'll leave a comment and let me know how your garden's doing whether it's a big garden or maybe it's the little grow bags or in a little cup on your deck on your balcony uh, whatever it is i encourage you to try if for nothing else the novelty of it just of being able to plant a seed and watch it grow it's just very rewarding but even if you can just grow a little bit of lettuce in a pot or one tomato plant it's just so wonderful to be able to grow something and watch it nourish it and then eat it and then have it have it provide sustenance to your body and at the same time it's fulfilling it's what it's made for you know it's it's getting to live its best dream too so please drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia which is a whole lot of growing things <music>